Time now to break down some of the big stories of the week with the Inside Utah Politics panel. This week we have State Senator Jim DeBacchus and State Senator-elect Dan McKay. Gentlemen, it's thanks for being Senator here. State Senator-unelect Yeah, I was going to say for a few more weeks anyway, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> We're quasi-colleagues for one week. We've yeah. always wanted to be there. You know, we actually co-sponsored a bill together. I heard he was leaving because he w heard that you were coming in. Yeah, that's I've heard the same. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. The 4th District. Wow, back and forth for a couple of weeks. McAdams comes out on top. Why? You really have to look at the provisionals uh, because that's what decided it on the last day. Look, you have to look at several things. Trump, factor number one. Factor number two, marijuana. Factor number three, um, Mr. Roberts ran a flawless, amazing campaign. And you also have to add in the factor Ben McAdams as a candidate and as a human being. It was... It had to be the perfect race. It's a plus 18 district. Democrats have no business doing that. So kudos out to everybody. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know necessarily about the other factors, but I will say the one thing that everybody was talking about in this election and was excited about and I think drove turnout was medical marijuana. And uh, you know, hats off to those who, who put the initiatives together. Uh, and you know, I think Ben should be sending them a great Christmas card this year. You think it's because of Prop 2 that Ben McAdams won? There's no question. There's no question in my mind. Do you agree with that? Yes, and I got a little worried. Um, we keep, kept an eye on where the public was going, and after the compromise, the public was paying less attention because the messaging through all the media, they all bought into this compromise, blah, blah, blah. Um, the the voter about. interest uh, among <laughs> those voters went down. So, uh, like Carl Rove did, I found that I had to come up with some way, and I went out and did a video on gummy bears that hopefully played a part of it, but getting those marijuana people out and off their couches, because that can be difficult um, with that group. With well, uh, ballot, they to, didn't really have to leave. Well, true. to they get them up to the ballot. counter, right? Yeah. I mean, they got out there, and no question, that was the number one issue why people voted. There was a high content of like Cheeto fingers on the ballot, uh, is what I heard from the clerk's office. You know too much, McGregor. And I noticed you didn't make a trip out to Nevada. Uh, I did not. Uh, I was actually behind the camera uh, filming Jim. Uh, <laughs> okay, so here's my question. Gummy bear experiment. No Prop 2 does McAdams win this race. Wow, that's a tough, I, I will say no. Uh, I think that Prop 2 definitely carried the day, especially with provisional late ballots and with same-day registration. I don't think so. Uh, it's typically in low, it, typically in midterm elections, which is for you know those of us that don't pay attention all the time, it's kind of halfway through the president's term every time. Those elections tend to be low turnout, and they tend to be very successful Republicans. That was Mia Love's first success in CD4. And her second success came in a presidential year. And then in this midterm, the one thing that drove Democrat turnout and candidly pushed it over the edge was those late ballots that were coming in in favor of Ben McAdams. The provisionals are, it turns out, young people. They're not people who've lived in a neighborhood along. Yeah. They're apartment people. They're more progressive. And Ben did about 50, names, did about 53% before in Salt Lake County. He upped that by almost 10% on the provisionals. So they were there and they were there for Ben. And now once people understand just how astonishingly talented Ben is, he's, I'm predicting he's gonna win by 15% next time. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. Because if we're gonna sit here and say provisionals and propositions you know, pushed him over the top, does that set up a Republican for a big challenge in 2020? I think it does. Uh, I, just like, so, in, when this seat was created back in 2012, right, uh, Mia versus Matheson, Matheson won. Second year, Mia won against Doug Owens. Third time up, Doug, again, Mia won against Doug Owens, and then Mia has lost now against Ben. A Democrat has won that seat just as many times as Republicans have won that seat. And I will tell you, whoever is in that seat for the foreseeable future is going to have a fight on their hands no matter what. Let's move on to uh, a little more into the turnout. We already talked about propositions leading the way. I think that's the you know common thought across the board. But what role did President Trump play in this? You alluded to it a bit. In that district, of all the districts, that's where he's the least popular in the state of Utah. Interesting. 
it, it was an 82% turnout, and it was, uh, it was a direct result of President Trump and the medical marijuana is, is my two cents on it. And I think that there's no question that people like or don't like this president. Remember, more people voted in this midterm than in the 2012 presidential election, and it was this close to 2018 and 16. I mean, this was an astonishing number of people voting. Why didn't Mitt Romney draw more of a, a crowd to the, to the uh, polls? Well, we saw in 2012 when Mitt Romney was at the top of the presidential ticket that there wasn't a long coattails, we call it, right? Where a bunch of candidates can, can jump on the coattails and ride them into office, right? Mia was expecting to kind of do the same uh, on Mitt's. I don't really know. One, the one thing I will say is Utah voters are very thoughtful. And I think when they're running through the ballot and trying to figure out who they like and who they don't like and who they're going to support, I, I really do think it is a candidate-specific position, despite what some people think that, you know, that they just check out on partisan issues. Okay, so all the propositions, three of them passing. Now the legislature is talking about making modifications to them. Is that dangerous territory for the legislature to go in and say, the people have spoken, but now we need to make changes to that? Let me talk about Prop 2 in particular. For eight years, the legislature, they are totally out of touch with the people of the state of Utah. Yes, it's this mean, insular, we are, we are out me, <laughs> yeah. it's Let's an sure insular <laughs> bunch that don't represent their constituencies. They're men, they're of a certain age, they're of a certain point of view, and they got challenged. They hated Prop 2. We they are. refused to do it. And as they refused to, to deal with the issue, you had 200,000 people signed a petition. You had thousands volunteering. And the majority of the people of the state of Utah said, yes, we want this. And on the other hand, there was a little cabal of seven or eight mysterious people. We're not sure exactly who was even around there. And they said, we're going to rip up what the people have worked so hard and we're going to replace what the people have approved with our own ideas because we're superior and we know a lot better. Give me a break. The legislature ought to be ashamed of itself, and the people ought to take control and get rid of okay. these people and put people that are representative of the population. Dan, we have 30 seconds. You have oh, the last word. Sorry. I, I, look, citizen initiatives are valuable because it does put, you know, it does put issues that have been missed by the legislature forward to, you know, to the people and lets the people have a vote. And I think in that way, that's valuable. I think the last element, though, is it, the legislature has to weigh carefully when making these changes. But changes have to be made. The law is constantly evolving. It has to be changed. Okay, we will be watching this as it plays out uh, over the next couple of weeks and months even. Gentlemen, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for being here. We always shake hands after. We'll be right back with more Inside Utah. And then that, too. <laughs> with Thank more Inside Utah <laughs> politics right after the break. Stay with us.